have another dream. I remember Monica. I remember the room. I remember something else. I hear a voice. I'm sorry you have to remember, but you need to in order to save them. You need to do this for them, for us. We need to save them together. I awaken to my alarm. My head reels from the surge of memories. I feel like I've lived multiple lives and have forgotten until now. I turn to see Natsuki clinging onto my side. She looks too cute to wake up. I gently poke her cheek. She punches me while half asleep. Ouch! Wake up already! Are you that dense? You're the one who wanted to sleep in my bed last night! Natsuki proceeds to get on my bed. I get her a towel from the laundry room. Use my parents' washroom, okay? Don't worry, I won't pee. I'm not falling for that. She'll most likely break my stitches and dent some. Come on, just go already, or we'll be late for school. Natsuki heads out of my room. I go to the restroom, carefully shower, and head back to my room. I get dressed and head downstairs. Natsuki is already starting cooking breakfast. She hasn't noticed me yet. What's cooking, good looking? Natsuki almost drops what she's making. Is that an omelet I spy? As you wish. I sit down at the kitchen table. I can't use my left arm that well anyways. How considerate of her. Thanks, Natsuki. Natsuki places down an omelet for each of us with orange juice and toast. I proceed to eat the omelet. It's warm and fluffy. The insides have mushrooms, spinach, tomatoes, and sausage inside. This is delicious, Natsuki. Thank you. Natsuki is at a loss for words. I can't wait. We proceed to finish our breakfast and head outside to pick up Siori. Wait a few minutes. Siori isn't out yet. I'm going to check on Siori. Wait here, Natsuki, okay? I go inside Siori's house. I look around. I check. No one's downstairs. I run to Siori's room and knock on the door. Siori? Good morning, Siori. I was worried about you. I give Siori a big hug. Well, are you ready to go? I gently hold Siori's hand and we walk outside. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, Natsuki is staying at my place for the time being. It's because of her dad! He went total psycho! I hand Siori a breakfast bar. She 
she munches on the bar. I hand her a second bar and she munches on that too. not say what I say of words. We continue to walk to school. Class is still boring as usual. Yay! Classes are over. Time to go clubbing! And when I mean clubbing, I mean the literature club. I walk in style to the literature club. Hello everyone! Are you free to talk for a little bit? In your room? We'll be right back everyone. I head out with Monica. We walk down the class halls again. This time I hold Monica's hand. Monica stops me. Monica, I have some questions. I think you might be the best person who can answer them for me. I've started to remember things. Like watching my friends die constantly around me, again and again. I remember always coming to Sioe's house when it was too late. I remember holding Yuri's hand as she was dying in the classroom. She didn't die until the next day, and there was nothing I can do. I remember never saving Natsuki from her abusive father. And I remember not being able to save you, Monica, having you stuck in this prison. I couldn't do anything about it, but now I can, I'm finally helping everyone. I should feel relieved, but instead, this tension is building up inside of me. But what I really need to ask you is... What do you know about the books? The book Yuri had and the one she gave me. The Portrait of Marco. Then why did I remember something else? Why do I think we don't belong here? I feel like us being here is a mistake, for all of us.
Yes, Sanya has helped me remember. We are trapped in a game. We need to find a way out. And somehow those books are linked to something we once were. Have you ever heard of the Third Eye, Monica? Yuri talked about it to me when she was reading the book with me. When she spoke about it to me, it was about people getting a lust for blood and going mad. But I think there was something more to it. Monica still has directly drew me again. She's looking for, and it's not me. It's you. We have to do this. Our job isn't done yet. Thanks, Monica, and thank you, Sandyx, for helping me to start to remember who I am. We head out of Monica's room. I walk back to the club room with Monica, hand in hand. Back. The girls start to bigger and argue on who wants to spend time with me first. <sighs> with all this attention, I feel like I should be the club mascot. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> Why don't you just do that rock, paper, scissors thing like you did before? He slaps me on the back of my left shoulder hard. Ouch! Did you forget about the stitches already? Suddenly, I'm feeling dizzy. Siori comes running back to the club room. Did I black out? I didn't realize how much the fight messed me up. I might be bleeding. Could someone help me check? I slowly take off my blazer as my arm is hurting again. I unbutton my shirt and take it off from the left side. I feel the girls penetrating stairs at me. Students in a room full of girls, but I got no choice. Like I'm in a den of lions ready to be feasted upon. Yuri checks on my arm and shoulder. Yeah, I have some from the hospital in my bag. Siori grabs my bag and brings it over. Yuri carefully unwraps the band from my arm and shoulder. They look in horror. Yuri looks in amazement. Like your poems, right? Okay, Yuri, calm down. Yuri carefully cleans my wounds with antiseptic.
Yuri strangely rubs my arm and back with her fingers. The other girls look at Yuri. Natsuki carefully wraps the bandages on my left arm and shoulder and tapes them firmly into place. Thanks everyone. Come to think of it, I've got a better idea. Who's up for ice cream? My tree. Yes, really. But first, I'd like to change into something more casual. So let's do this. How about we roll me up at my place in a little bit, and we'll go out together. There's a nice ice cream shop not that far from me. being there. We all head out and will me at my place. Natsuki and Siori walk home with me. Got it. Which reminds me, Natsuki. Here you go. Natsuki has set up the house keys. It would be a good idea for you to have them. Natsuki and I enter the house. I change into more casual clothing. Alright, let's head outside. I think the girls are raiding. Sayori, Yuri, and Monica are waiting in front. Monica is jittering like she needs a coffee fix. We all head out to the ice cream shop together. We arrive at the ice cream shop. I look at the sign of the ice cream shop. Shows Stone Cold Steve's ice cream. What an interesting name. We all head inside. Ice cream. Yay. The girls start to look around. Yes, I said anything. Nowski points to a poster on the wall. Her hand is shaking with excitement. Something that's literally the size of two of my heads combined. It's covered in almonds, chocolate syrup, caramel, five different flavors of ice cream, whipped cream, and a cherry on top. Start out, you insist. What would you like, Monica? She points to various carpet based dishes and drinks. Okay. Any drinks? I look at the menu myself. I think I'll get myself a sundae with some pecans and fudge and a coffee on the side. I walk to the waitress who is ready to take my order. Looks like she's exhausted. I look in the corner of the room. It shows a plaque for employees of the month. They are all of her. So, 
You must work hard for being the employee of the month, huh? I I see. Um, I'll take three specials, whatever coffee pastries you've got, a milk with ghetto, two large coffees, and three milkshakes. Okay, and two popsicles. Chewie looks tired. That's it, for now. Wowzers! I mean, here you go. I paid the price for love. Thanks! Let's go sit outside. The weather's nice. We can enjoy it while eating. We all head outside. We find a table and sit. Our waitress arrives with the desserts and drinks and quickly leaves. Let's eat! stories and news. We had a wonderful time. I hope so as well. Manga zooms on out. You're welcome, Yuri. By the way, you got to tell me, where do you buy those awesome knives at? They will cut above the rest. I want to get some for the house. I knew my puns were bad, but I didn't think it would scare Yuri away. Oh well. Let's head back. Walk back with Natsuki and Sior. I close hold hands with them, and they go with holding me by the arm. Now I'm so close to both of them, I feel like the center of a smushed oil. The day ends on a wonderful note, with a girl in each arm. We are back in front of my house. Hey, Sior! Want to stay over for dinner tonight? Siri's eyes light up. I guess I'm having two lovely girls to eat for dinner. <clears throat> I mean, for dinner tonight. We head inside. It smells really nice in the house. We go to the kitchen to see what Natsuki was up to. Natsuki lifts open the crock pot lid. So this was the surprise you were talking about, huh? I'm impressed. I'm surprised you had enough time to get this ready in the morning. places them on the table. Natsuki carries the crock pot over to the table and starts pouring servings for each of us. They all sit and eat. Delicious! Like I said before, Natsuki, you make someone a great... Okay, sorry. 
Siri ignores us and continues eating. I feel something in my pocket. Oh wait, I forgot I still had this in there. I pull out Yuri's poem. I try to read it again. Paper gives off an oily sweet smell to it. Maybe it's jasmine oil. Wait, there's something written on the other side of the paper. I flip over the paper. The third eye. I can feel the tenderness of my skin through the knives as if it were an extension of my sense of touch. My body convulses. There's something incredibly faint deep down that screams to resist this uncontrollable pleasure. But I can already tell that I'm being pushed over the edge. I can't, I can't stop myself. Save me. Help me. I can't stop anymore. It's too strong. The man has pulled me in, and I'm too weak to escape. Someone, please. Save me. My face turns white. Siri stops and stares at me. I'm fine, I'm fine. Thank you for your concern. I quickly hide the poem back into my pocket. Let's see. I continue E with Natsuki and Siori. We finished eating. The girls are watching a movie downstairs. I decided to take a final look into the books. Yuri was looking for something, but it drove her to madness. I found that other poem. Part of that is the key. At least I think it is. I unlock my desk and pull out both of the books. I shake and rip apart Yuri's book from the bindings. I find nothing. I take my copy of the portrait of Marco and do the same. A lone folded piece of paper falls out from the inside of the book cover. my eyes and we open them. I refocus on the poem. I I can read it now. A message to you. Everyone else is dead. Again and again. I couldn't save them. It happens over and over. There's no way for me to save them here. Unless someone finds this message, all hope is lost. This world's a prison. I always forget. I forget more each time. If you're reading this, you already knew that, didn't you? Always experiencing deja vu with no way out? Whoever used the third eye failed and may have stuck this way. I've forgotten so much of our previous world. I don't even remember my name. We are forever stuck in this endless loop. Marga thinks she's the one in charge. That's just a trick to prevent her from seeing the truth. If we can change this, there might be a way out for all of us. The only way is forward. Trying to go back when we lead to death. The bugs are a link. If we sever the link, something might change. I know I am useless, but maybe you can help me. Together we can do this. This is my story. It's time to be a freaking hero. Both of us. I... I wrote this? I can't remember though. These bugs need to be destroyed. That way the link to the old world is gone forever. But the point is the third eye. I checked the other poem. 
Open your third eye. The darkness comes closer to me. Life is fleeing. Desperate, I pierce into my very soul. My sight turns red. Madness flows into me, trying to pray my sanity away. At last, I am in control. I am whole again. My eyes are open, and I can see all. I know all. I am God. Hmm. So piercing my soul is how I can open my third eye? I'm going to have to figure out more on what that means. By the way, why am I talking out loud? I know you can hear me otherwise. <sighs> I throw the pieces of the books into the trash bin by my desk. I'm burning these tomorrow. My bio be purged. I hear a knock on my door. I quickly hide the poems. Come in! I look at my watch. It's already 10 p.m. Siori, shouldn't you be heading home? It's already getting pretty late. But, we're not in a club right now. I'm not going to win. I get it, I get it. You just want to hang out more. It's understandable. Let's just relax here for now. We can watch TV in the bedroom. I'll get the other room ready for you, okay, Siori? end up watching streaming shows late in my bedroom. Both Siri and Natsuki fall asleep next to me in my bed. These girls are just too cute. I've got to be careful. I might become a more mom because of them. I turn off the lights in the room and go to sleep as well. It's going to be another long day tomorrow. Going to find a way out for all of us.